Hey, it's Amanda Elowesh, and I'm finally back with you after my incredible journey home to be a part of my dad's passing. And then I had all kinds of crazy tech goblins. I think they were really dedicated to helping me to be a little bit more introverted, inward with my process, which makes sense. Although I'm pretty dedicated to being very transparent here. This is why I do all my videos myself with really not um, pretty much any editing, as you can tell, um, because I want them to be raw. I want you to... Um, I want you to know who I am, not who my uh, makeup artists and um, editors and, you know, this is a time for you to get uh, a sense of me and for me to share myself in a very real and raw way with you as much as we can over the internet. So, um, what I wanted to share with you, it, it's kind of funny, you know, I had I, a friend of mine help me. Uh, by suggesting I create a, a schedule for all of my newsletters and it was really great because I have workshops that I offer and I teach the Living Wisdom School and it was nice to kind of organize it and put it all together so it made sense. It, it um, The structure of it allowed for a lot of creativity to flow in. Um, but, you know, of course, every time we make plans, the universe kind of laughs, laughs and uh, shakes shakes them down and um, it's definitely what happened uh, the, the week that my that I was in Utah um, with my family after my father passed that week on my schedule was full of a lot of amazing things that I had worked hard to put together and looked forward to and they all got kind of cleared away and um, you know we've been working with the priestess and I've been wanting to share with you the qualities of the priestess, um, but what's been so potent, which is the archetype that's moving in, is the creator, preserver, destroyer, like Kalima, um, death and rebirth. And it's so perfect, the timing of my father's passing over Easter and the theme of resurrection and um, Passover, just all these life and death and rebirth kind of stories and experiences and um I was kind of feeling that, you know, I look, I took the risk and looked at my schedule to see if, if there was any way to tie in what I had put on my schedule, with what was going on in my real world. Because I'm, I, I do like the schedule, but I'm really more committed to honoring what's real. Because I think we're all kind of on similar rides together, and um, and I'm more about what's real rather than what's scheduled. So. Um, what I'd scheduled was uh, the biggest, one of the most beautiful uh, um, superpowers of the priestess is presencing beauty, which means not just making things look pretty, but to emanate, to manifest beauty through presence, through being really mindful, through knowing how to put a sacred altar together. Again, not just so it looks pretty, but so that it sparks ancient memories, so it the symbols and the colors and the way that things are put together activate a part of the brain that has gone to sleep over the generations of losing our connection with our indigenosity and losing our connection with the holy. So um, the priestess in making beauty from a mindful and empty presence place is a channel for the divine. It's basically a, a communication for the divine and it's that's why we find it so beautiful. I'm sitting out here in my backyard, this place of nature. Um, it's beautiful because it's the divine. <laughs> it's the life. It's the, the children of the divine. So um, I was feeling into how presencing beauty factored into my experience, you know, what's going on with the new archetype that's coming in, Kali and resurrection and rebirth and it's really that, um, you know, my experience required, as I said, a lot of things were on the on my plate and they all just got wiped clean. And uh, instead of worrying about it and what it might mean financially or business-wise or in all these great collaborations and new projects and ideas that were about to um, pop for me, <clears throat> I really trusted. Um, I really trusted my relationship with the Holy and and the chaos, the gift of chaos, the gift of of wiping the slate clean, which is the next month's archetype. 
and um, but the the presence of the priestess to be able to trust all that is happening for a reason, and to to let go of worry, to not react in fear, to drop into empty presence, and to listen to the divine speak through. And how do I show up as a priestess? Not just in the temple when it's all quiet and uh, you know you've got the gatekeepers smudging people in and and uh, there's silence and beauty all around and um, you, you know soft music but when you know when there's an earthquake or when there's a death or a tragedy that's when it's most important to be a priestess to be able to step up as a priestess and to make beauty happen in the middle of grief because when we do that the grief becomes an offering a ritual a feeding of the holy it nourishes the soul it helps unfinished business to feel finished and completed. It helps a lot of feelings that we don't like to acknowledge in our culture to be put towards something that's honoring, that feels really nourishing to the soul. And I was able to do that, you know, within just a couple of hours, literally a couple of hours notice before I jumped on a plane to head home to just drop in and listen, what do I need to bring with me? What items, what sacred power tools do I need to bring? Oils, rocks, you know, my shaman bag of rocks, um, anointing oils, and everything, everything I brought was helpful, was something very useful. And had I not had the, the skills of the priestess, I wouldn't have known how to show up. It would have been a a painful, stressful, overwhelming ordeal. But instead, it was this beautiful time to connect with my family, to focus on doing everything in a good way, from moving my mom, packing up my mom's house and helping her to move, to helping my mom with her grief, and to take care of herself, and that's not her MO, um, supporting harmony between family members as their individual grief and old wounds got triggered and came up so that um, we were there for each other and um, you know it's not all me I have a great family but it makes such a huge difference and uh, it's a superpower that we will all need as we lose as we start to have loss in our lives the older we get the greater it can be and unfortunately some younger um, uh, People who have great loss early on in life, but it's it's a human um, superpower that's um, worth more than its weight in gold if it had a weight. <laughs> anyway, um, so I wanted to share that with you, and um, I I kind of go into the whole what's you know the the connection between Kali and Jesus, and hopefully it can help you expand your perspective culturally about life, death, and rebirth, and supporting you in walking towards whatever loss, whatever death, whatever transformation is happening with an eye towards resurrection, with an eye towards new life, and how to show up to presence beauty, to be a channel for the divine so that it can be a time of making beauty and making ritual. Um, it's so much, um, it's worlds of difference, and difference between health and, and sickness and um, joy and peace versus um, despondence and des depression. So uh, may you bring this into your world and share it in your experiences. And until next week, may the source be with you.